Hey everybody, welcome to the Incredible Warriors. I'm Chemek. Today we're going to do some blind reactions to some paranormal encounters. This link was sent to me by a personal friend of mine. I haven't seen it, so it's going to be a blind reaction. Um, if you like this kind of content of me just speaking my open mind about stuff like this, any reaction, actually the, hit that like button so I know you want me to do some more reaction videos. Uh, hit, don't forget to hit that follow button. Um, will help me grow, help me make this for, or to whatever we can make it for, right? And uh, without further ado, let's get to it. Let's start and see what this is about. They say dogs experience the world differently from humans. Their senses of smell and hearing are far better than ours. But a recent video has people wondering if these superpowers go far beyond their noses and ears. On a sweltering July day in 2020, UK residents Meg Oxby and Jeff Parlett are on a hike with their trio of Hungarian Vizlas, unaware of what they're about to witness. We were walking along, just having a chat like we normally do, and then we noticed that the dogs were not moving. At first, this looks like a photograph, but keep watching. The camera starts moving, and yet the dogs all appear to be frozen in their tracks. We couldn't believe it. You could see the leaves moving and all the bushes, but the dogs were completely still. I'm telling you, we are not freezing or slowing down this video. You can tell by the shrubbery right here that it's moving in the wind. Okay. Now check out how this dog has his leg raised and tail curled. And this other dog is frozen in mid-step. Look, it seems impossible to maintain balance like that. The three Vizlas stay in that position for four whole minutes before resuming their normal dog activity. We were completely gobsmacked. Ancient cultures from the Greeks to the Romans to Koreans all have myths about dogs having supernatural ability. The Mayans believe that dogs, known for being great swimmers, swam the souls of the dead across a shadowy lake to the afterlife. Forensic investigator Chase Klotsky wonders if something like that is at work here. Are there, like, forces somehow no. making them stop like that? It seems like a theory <laughs> is that dogs have a spiritual side almost. They sense things like earthquakes, illness, even death sometimes. Recent studies have explored whether dogs have some sort of sixth sense to communicate telepathically. Meg and Jeff concur. Their dogs seem to have some kind of canine ESP. They knew what they were all doing, <laughs> and they knew how long to stay still for. So it's just amazing how they can communicate without actually speaking. That side of it is kind of magical, really. Ugh. That was me trying to freeze for just five seconds. It's impossible. I'm too twitchy. So forget about four whole minutes. It's clear these dogs can do some amazing things, right? But no. can they really freeze themselves in mid-step? Let's take the video to our experts. Zoologist Roxy Furman considers whether a supernatural force may have terrified the dogs into a form of paralysis. Dogs definitely do freeze when they're afraid, so there could be something that's made them scared but there's nothing else in their body language that indicates fear. Their ears are up, their tails up. Vizlas are hunting dogs, but I don't think that they can be that still for the entire duration of a four minute video without kind of any movement. It looks like it's been edited in some way to me. Compare this other video of hunting Vizlas with Meg and Jeff's. You can see these other dogs don't maintain their posture as well or as long. So maybe Roxy's right. Meg and Jeff's dog video can't be real. So there are apps that can be downloaded on these mobile devices that can animate certain areas of a picture while preserving other areas frozen in time. Although these apps can deceive a viewer, we found no evidence to support that this file was manipulated or slowed down or frozen in any way. So this is, in fact, real. Still, biology professor Floyd Hayes believes this is just the product of centuries of breeding. This is a behavior that is selectively bred for in several breeds of dogs, although it is reinforced in dogs by training. In fact, they actually can be trained to lift a paw above the ground when they are pointing. Hayes may be onto something here. 
At the end of the video, we do see the dogs unfreeze as soon as a bird flies away. But here's the catch. Meg and Jeff say they have never trained their dogs to behave like this. Yeah, we teach them, so. you know, sit and stay, but this, <laughs> this was something on a completely different scale and something Why that does he keep looking over to his I can't see being taught to them whatsoever. Our verdict? Before we're gonna hear the very I call bullshit, I don't believe Yeah. This is was not what I was thinking of when I got the link of uh four horrifying paranormal encounters as the title says will give you nightmare. Mm, I think I'm gonna sleep pretty good no matter what. At least for the dog ones, right? Not gonna scare me at all. <laughs> oh, that's the no. This is still an animal anomaly. These three Vizslas really did freeze in place for four minutes. And if Meg and Jeff truly didn't train them to do this, how they stop time is still a doggone mystery. October 2000. Okay, um, how are we gonna do this? Uh, oh, gonna go to the next one. No, you know what? Let's go for the next one. Let's, let's hope this is gonna be more of a paranormal. So far, I'm actually kind of disappointed <laughs> with the title. Even at the thumbnails, like horrifying thumbnail, you know, people background, like kind of like spooky stuff or not horrifying, but kind of like, you know, give you that spooky vibe. Um, but this is actually a uh, dough ship spotted on Lake Superior says in the bottom. Okay. Uh, I don't know much about Lake Superior besides it's a massive lake, right? That's about it. I think it's a lake, right? It's gotta be a lake, but I know it's massive. 2018. Jason Asselin is giving friends a tour along the shores of Lake Superior near Marquette, Michigan. As we're walking along the lake shore, I heard somebody gasp and I looked over and I saw them pointing out into the water and said, what is that out there? Jason pulls out his camera and starts recording. There's what appears to be a tall and large object on the horizon. So let's take a closer look. The object is gray in color, but the shape appears pretty blurry. Jason and his friends think it might be a ship. The ship. Okay. What? They zoom in, right. Okay. It's pretty hard to see, but in what way is that a ship? I mean, ever. Okay. The object is gray in color, yeah. but the shape appears pretty blurry. No. Jason and his friends think it might be a ship. This ship would have had to have been hundreds of feet into the air. We never thought that it was a <laughs> ghost ship at the time, but when I got home and ghost watched ship. the video, that's all I could think of. We just I saw a ghost it. ship. <sighs> Since the late 1800s, there have been hundreds and hundreds of shipwrecks that have occurred on Lake Superior. It's definitely a dangerous patch of water that is essential for trade, but very risky to travel on. From the SS Western Reserve in 1892 to the Hudson in 1901, many large freighters have sunk in bad weather, only to be seen again, allegedly plying the waters long after a tragic yeah, wreck. Allegedly. According to local legend, one of the most famous ships to have gone down is the SS Bannockburn. Locals call it the Flying Dutchman of Lake Superior, and people still claim to see it to this day. Okay. That's a reference to the legendary Flying Dutchman the doomed 17th century ship that's been sighted and spoken of for centuries. Jason can't help but wonder if this is the mysterious phenomenon he's captured on camera. We just witnessed something out of this world. There's a poem about the world's most famous phantom ship with the line, they who see the flying Dutchman never, never reach the shore. But when it comes to getting answers, never say never. Here's what we found. First, sign I will say this. I do like that they do the, the analyze part and they come with a verdict themselves, but uh, yeah. Ghost ship, flying document. Are you kidding me? Literally, this is, was not what I was expecting. Not at all. Science writer and forensic video analyst Mick West focuses on the shape of the object in Jason's video. He notes that most famous shipwrecks in Lake Superior are freighters with steam engines. This looks different. It looks like a sail ship. I don't know whether they have big sail ships on the Great Lakes, 
that that's what it looks like, and if that's unexpected, then that's, uh, that's a clue that it's not actually a ship. Next, the team considers another possibility. Physicist Dr. Michio Kaku says it might be a mirage. Okay. A mirage is caused by temperature inversion, and dense air bends light more than hot air. A temperature inversion can make images below the horizon visible, distorted in the distance. So could the weather be causing this effect? Atmospheric scientist Dr. Deanna Hintz looked at the data the day the sighting happened and sees just such an inversion. The temperature is decreasing and it's actually getting closer to zero. So this is that temperature inversion that can lead to that warm air sitting on top of cold air. This can actually really change how light can propagate through the atmosphere. Then Mick West tries to put the pieces together. Could a temperature inversion have distorted something that is already there? Turns out, there's a small island 12 miles offshore in this area that's normally hard to see. Up above, we have a, a view of the island. So this is the direction we're looking from. So I just simply lined up the lighthouse here in the top with the lighthouse down here. Okay, so that lines up perfectly. Right there. I believe that more than I believe, you know, it's a ghost ship. <laughs> so what is that thing? The key for us was the temperature data and that island. Our verdict, mirage. A temperature inversion caused an island that's usually a bump on the horizon to look like a phantom ship. Yeah. Again, nothing paranormal right here, right? It's, uh, see, I hate these kind of videos, right? They lure you in. And this is what, of course, they have to do, right? And, uh, yeah. And nothing, right? Will give you nightmares from what? It literally says in the title, right? Four horrifying paranormal encounters will give you nightmares. Still waiting for the thing that's going to give me nightmares. Unless there's going to pop a clown out somewhere, I don't think that will happen. Yeah, I'm terrified of clowns, by the way. But let's go. There's like a, or four encounters. I've got two, so two down. It's January 17th, 2020 in Fargo, North Dakota. Winter has really set in with packed snow and ice on the ground and temperatures dipping to one degree overnight. After looking at an office space to rent, accountant and mother of six, Nicole Hepner, returns to her car and records something very strange. It was very icy, and it was so windy that I could hardly even walk on the sidewalk because it was almost blowing my feet out from underneath of me. Okay, this is the third time. I, got, I gotta stop. So, how come these people are always super excited, right? If you see, saw something like a paranormal encounter that will, will as the title say, will give you nightmare or make you think, why are you... Keep going. Look. Makes no sense. If I saw a clown, I will not be smiling. I guarantee you guys that. I promise you, I will not be smiling whatsoever. I'll be sitting over in the corner crying, maybe. And I noticed that there was a light pole in the parking lot that was just wiggling. <laughs> it was rattling really loudly. <laughs> Everyone thought it was really unique and crazy and special. It just made you think that we can all feel the cold. It affects things that even aren't alive, like our cars and the buildings. And here's what makes this a mystery. We can see that the wind was blowing. Look at that bush. But strangely, there's an identical pole in the background that doesn't seem to move at all. Animism is a religious belief that objects and plants have souls. And while there is no way to test whether that's true or not... Wait, so you, seriously, there's a religion that objects and plants have souls? What do you call it? What, 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 what was it called again? Animism is a religious belief that... Animism? Okay, so animism is where plants and objects have a soul. Well, technically a plant is alive. Uh, it, it literally, you know, the, the water go through a plant is technically like... Uh, it's the blood of the plant, right? Uh, so plants are alive. That That's a given fact. We all know that. But, but objects... But again, if they have a soul, uh, the... okay. Nope, Tammy, we do not. No, 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 no. Uh, 
Uh, I don't want to get cancelled on my first video <laughs> reaction video ever <laughs> just because some people <gasps> believe what you want to believe, people. All you want, I don't care. Objects and plants have souls. And while there is no way to test whether that's true or not, we can try to see if there's a scientific explanation mm -hmm. for what we're seeing here, let's no matter that. how uncanny it may be. So let's have our experts weigh in. Experts. Mm. Could the cold have caused this? Atmospheric scientist Dr. Deanna Hens has pulled up the weather data from that day when temperatures were well below the freezing mark. Typically speaking, these kind of poles easily withstand cold temperatures. We see these kind of light poles all over the country, and they're built to withstand a wide range of conditions. That takes us to the wind. Could it be to blame? Given that hint that the wind was affecting the bush within the video screen, I just wanted to check and see the wind speeds. It turns out that they were going at a pretty healthy clip anywhere from roughly about 30 to closer to 40 miles per hour. In fact, Hen says a blizzard was blowing through the region that weekend, at times causing whiteout conditions. But physicist Dr. Hakim Olushehi says it's not only the speed of the wind that matters, but its direction and frequency. Any gust of wind is not gonna cause a light pole to shake in this way. What we're looking at potentially is resonant phenomena. And so what matters is the frequency of the wind. Everything solid has a natural frequency of vibration. True. Well, you don't have to hit an object with a hammer. You can hit it with the wind. The wind makes vibrations in this lamppost, and these vibrations are magnified if they resonate with the length of the lamppost. So when the vibration of the wind hitting the light post has the same frequency as the natural frequency of the post, it amplifies the vibration causing this resonance effect. Physicist Dr. Michio Kaku says if the resonance were to get strong enough, the light pole might actually collapse. That's what happened in 1940 in Washington. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge collapsed as a consequence of wind. Wind passing over the bridge, causing the entire bridge to oscillate like a snake. This is a phenomenon known as aeroelastic flutter, which occurs when the energy from the wind is rapidly absorbed by the structure and converted into mechanical vibrations. Okay, but there you got your answer then. Again, nothing paranormal about so, it. So, our verdict. It was certainly cold enough in North Dakota to make people shiver, but the light post is vibrating so violently because the wind gusts are causing resonance. And the adjacent light post isn't moving because the wind is hitting it at a different frequency. Perhaps because the vibrating post is in a tight wind tunnel. It's May 2020. And when Alexa Walkovitz learned her mother's dog, Lala, was lost. Okay, before we get into this. Oh, yeah. Um, that lamp post did not have a soul. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no. Uh, again, nothing paranormal. Uh, kind of disappointed. Um dog that's getting lost uh, last chance for for it to be paranormal right and uh, let's go for it it's a blind reaction and <laughs> i was just like i wish i haven't seen this <laughs> no um it's okay you know but but this just proves that sometimes people think you know that the, the smallest thing, right? And oh God, there's something behind it. Um, and most of the time there's not. Okay, let's uh, go a little bit back. It's learned her mother's dog, Lala, was lost. She and her friend Anna did something you might find hard to believe. We look in our home, we pick the settings, and we just think really, really long and hard about Lala. Let's visualize in our mind us finding her. What? Well, believe it or not, it's all about an app called Randonautica. Alexa and her friends set an intention and thought of her mother's dog. The Randonautica app, which claims to direct people to a real-world encounter with those intentions, then displayed random GPS coordinates near her home in the Mojave Desert. We're walking forward, walking forward, and... and so wait. Before going to... So, what? If I understand right, this is an app that if you turn it on and 
think about something hard enough and re visualize it, you should be able to find it, whatever it is. You what? So I'm, I'm not a genius, right? But I know that a computer and apps have one function, right? They can only do what they're coded to do, right? So that means they cannot go into human emotions whatsoever unless they're connected, uh, not even if they're connected to human, but they cannot go into whatever you are thinking at all. Now we, we can put sensors on, on, on our head, forehead, and, and uh, so we can, you know, see how the, well, not see, but we can measure how the brain kind of works, right? Because it's still completely a mystery to us, most of it. Um, no way. The people believe that there's an app, literally believe. And I, this is, I'm baffled. I, mm, guys. Around the world, whoever's gonna watch the video, don't do this. Don't don't put your faith on an app that literally says you just have to visualize stuff. Open this app, and we will help you find whatever you're looking. No way, it's not gonna happen. An app can't do that. If you want an app to find you something, you literally gotta type in, you know. Uh, 100% what you're looking for and be clear on your message. Not like, yeah, I, I wanna hear the story, I actually do. It's pissing me off, but I wanna hear the story. He turns to me and kind of like says, what's that? There was a little animal. Where did you come from? And I realized it was a dog. What? I didn't even see it. Take another look. Out of nowhere, yeah, but it wasn't this your dog appears dog? in the desert. Now, it turned out this dog wasn't her mother's. It had escaped from a nearby property. And although Alexa never found Lala, she is convinced the app taps into the power of the mind. It's kind of a... You just disproved the whole app by not finding the dog you're looking for. Yeah, you found a dog, but that's just a coincidence. I mean, literally... No, no. This was the last video of Jeremy. First and... <laughs> I'm gonna, oh, people are gonna get either you're with me or I'm gonna get in so much trouble for this healing adventure because maybe that was my dog speaking through that dog and was trying to say to you like listen it's okay here I am to comfort you for a moment experiences like Alexa's made rando nautica the craze of 2020 in just three months the app drew over 15 million downloads with thousands of posts on social media of people declaring their intentions the intention for my random knot journey is purple. Heading to random locations. Yes. Is that a purple house? And finding their wishes at least partially fulfilled. Like thinking of purple and then having the app lead to this backyard. This is kind of blowing my mind right now. So does the world of the mind connect with the physical world? No. Can Rando Nautica really manifest our intentions? No. Nope. We asked our friendly physicist to come up with an experiment <laughs> to test it. That's not gonna happen. Dr. Hakim Olushei and Dr. Michio Kaku give us our guidelines. In order to test this idea to see if it works, you have to do a lot of tests to remove the statistical uncertainties, and you have to keep very careful records of when you're right and when you're wrong. There it is. Second, true. when it comes to a goal, make it specific and not metaphorical. My intention was adventure and cool stuff and Adventure and cool stuff? Okay, I give you an adventure right here now, right? If you go out your front door and you normally turn right, right, then you probably will have, you know, more or less the same walk that you always do. But the second you turn left, it's gonna be a new adventure. Plain and simple. I had I don't need an app to make an adventure, make something new, right? And come up things that you think is cool that will can be anything from person to And how would the app know for for a fact what you think is cool unless you type in I'm looking for uh the Lego Death Star of Star from Star Wars. I mean for me, that would be an amazing thing, right? To give it, but like, seriously, guys. 
Oh. <laughs> Lily, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm not happy. This one irritates me more than the rest of them. But uh, I want to see this through, and 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 then we're gonna have a discussion about these things, right? It's gonna be a way longer episode. I thought I could split it up to four parts, and be like, oh, it's gonna be talking about uh, the, the something. Uh, I don't know. More paranormal than this. This is not paranormal. This is. Oh. This is so cool. Not something that looks pretty. Wow. No, cash. That to me would be a very convincing experiment. So that's just what we did, asking our test subject to declare cash as her intention. A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. The app generates random GPS coordinates. <laughs> now let's see where we're going. <laughs> just generate random part GPS part of a hairbrush? That's not a hundred dollars, so that's a hairbrush. No cash. No. All right, my intention, one hundred dollars. One hundred dollars. Found a weird buckle thing. Our subject keeps repeating the experiment. My intention, one hundred dollars. Then, at one location, no dollar bills, but... Found some batteries. So, we didn't find any money at this location, um, but there is a bank really close to here, so you never know, maybe that's what drew me here. Like many Randonautica <laughs> stories, the exact intention didn't manifest. Okay, okay, so if, if on many of them, the exactly encounter did not manifest, then it's bullshit. But 50 million people did this, I promise you, uh, there's gotta be a lot of them have done it for just a laugh of it, I'm a hundred percent. No way 15 million people came together and thought that this app can do this. Not all. Uh, please, Siri, don't. Please. Don't, don't. It's white people, isn't it? Yeah. Let, let's, um, $100 a bank. It random generates, you know, stuff. At some point, if you keep doing it, you will find a bank. Yeah. So, or drive past it or something, right? So, I mean. Okay, let's, let's get done with this before. I... <laughs> but something oh. kind of related. So what's happening here? Not the Kaku believes the explanation is something called the synchronicity effect. Okay. A phenomenon where people interpret two coincidental events as intertwined. Wow. Synchronicity, for example, is you're thinking about Joe, and Joe calls you on the telephone. And you say to yourself, aha, I knew it, I'm psychic. It's kind of blowing my mind right now. <laughs> yeah. But right. Kaku explains, while everyone remembers the occasional hits... Most of the time, they're misses. You forget about them. But think of all the times when you thought about Jane and, and Harry and they didn't call you. It's a good example. Our verdict? Most likely coincidence, which comes from no, people making likely. very general wishes 100%. like something that will make me happy. But there is a lot we still don't know about this universe. But that's what we think. What do you think? You th so, they do not want to know what I think, right? Yeah, um, maybe I should try some of the other ones. Let me know, guys, if you want me to try something of the others that uh, uh, might be, you know, or something else. You want me to react to something else? Leave it in the comments below. As long as it's uh, it's okay with with the uh, with YouTube, let's do it. Let's try it out. Um, you will get my one hundred percent honest opinion on everything. <laughs> oh. I wish I didn't see this. It um, it bugs the hell out of me. But yeah, don't forget to hit that follow button. Please do that. Help me grow this channel up to be something unique. And let's uh, hit that like button. 
if you want to see me react to something, right? It, I don't care if it's music or more of this or something funny or yeah, let let me react, react to it and um, I'll see you in the next one, right? Take care, everybody.